Flavor Balance Heat, the podcast for hot sauce lovers and makers, is brought to you by Scoville.com. Try Scoville.com's hot sauce subscription box, where you pick the heat, flavor, and food pairings you want in your box. Get one or three bottles delivered to your door each month. Choose your heat level, flavor profile, and food pairings. And it's completely customizable each month. You no longer have to worry about getting the sauces you don't like or won't use. Scoville.com specially curates each month's box based on your personal preferences. And best of all, High Desert Sauce Co., Butterfly Bakery of Vermont, and Irish Spike's unique hot sauces are all available at Scoville.com. So Spike, Desert Island hot sauce. I'm going to bring in some different sauces. Uh, I'm going to say four that I would use that fit that bill. Welcome to Flavor Balance Heat, the podcast for hot sauce lovers and makers. I'm Claire. And I'm not Zach. I'm Clark. (laughs) (laughs) Today we are doing something a little different. We are actually interviewing our very own Spike from Irish Spike's Hot Sauces and Vandal Pepper Sauces. Spike, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. This is weird. <laughs> I felt like a little jealous of not saying my lines. <laughs> I, I felt a little power hungry, I have to admit. <laughs> it is great to have you here and talk to you and uh, get to ask you all the questions. Awesome. <laughs> and Clark, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for being not Zach today. Yes, absolutely. Thanks for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I did okay the first time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. So, Spike, why don't you tell us about your history with hot sauce and just spicy food in general? Yeah. Uh, so when I was growing up, my mom, garlic was too spicy for her, and my dad was really into spicy food. Uh, so... You know, I kind of started off gravitating towards what my mom liked, but as I got older, I gravitated more and more to what my dad liked. And then I was working in a restaurant. um, I don't know. I was probably 18 or 19 living on my own. And I started making burritos and using spicy peppers in the burritos. And I kept, I was started going spicier and spicier and I would bring them to work and show the guys in the back, you know, all these Mexican guys. And they would, once they started saying it was too hot, then I felt like I made it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was eating that stuff kind of all the time. And uh, I mean, that was back when in the days when habaneros were the hottest thing you found, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, I really got into it. I remember when Sriracha first came around, I really got into that. And um, I started cooking right after I, I got out of uh, college, uh, grad school. I just uh, I ended up cooking in this little pizza place sandwich shop. And I had been a server for many years. And suddenly I found myself on the other side of the line and it just seemed natural. Like, oh, uh, this is what I should have been doing because I was an awful server. I've got a lot of ADHD stuff going on. And uh, as Zach likes to say it, I've always got a thousand irons in the fire. <laughs> and uh, so it, that works for me as a cook and uh, being on the line, everything within five feet, I could really make that work. And I, I enjoyed it. I started watching uh, Good Eats and uh, Alton Brown and we had a, um, a, a farm, maybe a half block from our house. And we, you know, we signed up for the vegetables and all that wonderful stuff. And I started having to learn how to use all this stuff. And I would watch good eats and kind of get ideas. And then we suddenly moved across the country and <laughs> that's what I was. I, I was a cook from that, that point on. I, everything I went to school for, which was for writing, I decided to kind of set aside and um, became a sous chef in this uh, wonderful restaurant in Pullman, uh, Washington, called Birch and Barley. And the chef taught me a lot there, uh, Chef Jones. And uh, we're still really good friends. And if he tells me to this day, I don't work the line or anything, but if he tells me to do something, I, I mean, I'll just do it. Um, 
it just feels natural. And I, and I trust the guy he's, he taught me so much about like in my business, cutting every penny and, and, you know, shaving off whatever I can. I remember one time he, uh, figured out how much it cost the restaurant to run one load of dishes and then added it up for the entire, and it was like, Oh my God, I didn't even think that you should do that. You know? Um, and so that's kind of where my thinking has been in our business. Um, we moved to Eugene for a while and I was working in a, this little bar. I actually got hired to work for a Michelin star chef in Portland and turned it down to work, to work in, um, Eugene. And I got hired at the best restaurant in Eugene and turned it down because they didn't pay well enough to work in this little bar in South Eugene where they paid really well and we made really good tips. And, uh, so I, worked three to four days a week, like 10 to 14 hours a day and, uh, really busted my ass. You know, I, I was the oldest person in the kitchen there and, uh, it, it took its toll on me pretty quick. I did that for five years, but towards the end of it, the last year, year and a half, I was doing the Monday wing night and I started getting creative with the wings and I noticed more and more and more people were showing up on Monday nights. It had been a pretty dead night up to then. And then we couldn't keep wings in the place. It was just, they would sell out, uh, by seven o'clock, we'd go through 2,500 wings and nice. I started feeling guilty because I had people that would come across town just on that night for my wings. And I had like these creative toppings and all this stuff going on. And so I started having them over to my house and I would try out new sauce recipes and I, on my own dime, uh, have these wing parties at my house. And they all said, why don't you just open a wing restaurant? And I didn't have the money for that. We were kind of done with Eugene by then um, and decided we wanted to move back to Moscow, Idaho, where we live now. And um just I called my old boss up at Birch and Barley and I said, uh, manager Jill. And I just said, Hey, Jill, uh, what do you think about us coming there and me making hot sauce when chef's not there? And she said, just get here now, get here now. <laughs> and that's Jill, you know, and, and we packed everything up, moved back to you, uh, moved back to Moscow and, uh, we're done moving. This is home now. Um, and, I started the hot sauce business and we've been growing ever since it's been pretty wild. Uh, add on, I got to work with Alton Brown who started my whole journey. Uh, we got to make his sauce, which was a real honor. Um, uh, I don't even know how to describe that. It was amazing. And now actually I'm working with the other chef that made a huge impact, uh, uh, impact on me, which is Andrew Zimmer. And it's just that's insane. Awesome. Yeah. It's really insane. So that's where we're at. That's great. That's, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> so what year was that that you decided to move back to Eugene and, and kind of start that? Uh, back from Eugene to oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. to Moscow. Yeah, yep. uh, that was 2018. So we've been 18. in business. This is our sixth year. Okay. And your business is... Um, you, you merged, well, you had, you had Irish spikes and then Vandal pepper sauce. You bought that company. Is that how that worked or? No. Uh, so, oh, I did. I guess I skipped that part. When we came back in, um, one of the owners of Birch and Barley, uh, owned another restaurant here in Moscow called the breakfast club. Uh, and he asked, he had his own hot sauce called Vandal pepper sauce. It was a, it's a delicious sauce. And he said, do you want to come make that and make yours? And for, the first few years I made both sauces and ran both companies separately, which was insane. Um, and then finally <laughs> in 2002, both of us were like, why are we doing this? <laughs> Let's put them together. Um, and we did, and it's been great. I mean, I've got the best Griffin and Kevin and Lori and me and my wife are all five partners for hottest life LLC, our company. And it's uh, amazing. I, I couldn't ask for better partners and Kevin, is who I talk to the most um, has taught me so much about business and just being a, a really good person. He means the world to me. It's, you know, uh, probably uh, well, well, we'll talk about who inspires me later on, but I'd say he'd be definitely on that list. 
Flavor Balance Heat, the podcast for hot sauce lovers and makers, is brought to you by Irish Spike's unique hot sauces and Vandal Pepper sauces. I'm Spike, the owner and executive saucier. Our sauces are handmade in the Pacific Northwest using the best possible ingredient. We believe that hot sauce equates to a balance of sensational heat coupled with a robust and complex flavor profile. Live your hottest life with Irish Spikes. Irish Spikes unique hot sauces and Vandal Pepper sauces are available at saucecult.com. How does it, how, how does having five owners kind of affect the the running of the day-to-day of the business? Is everybody involved in the day-to-day? No, it's pretty much me. Uh, Kevin, I, I'll talk to, he'll brief everybody else. Well, except my wife, I brief my wife. Um, <laughs> but, you know, basic decisions, any big decision we will all make together, I'll filter it through. But there hasn't been any huge dis- decisions. And, you know, they, they seem to trust me, which baffles me. But, you know, <laughs> I do my best. I take it. Uh, it really means a lot to me that uh, that we they, their money is in my hands and I, I I'm responsible for that. And um, it, it means everything in the world to me to be able to give that back to them and let them get a, a return on their investment. Nice. Wonderful. So, Spike, what makes a great hot sauce? Flavor balance heat. Um <laughs> Done. But this podcast it's like is that con- name just came out of magic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this podcast has actually changed my view on Me hot too. sauce a little bit because I've realized that there's kind of two types of hot sauce. I mean, there's a lot more than that, but in general, really big ba- in its most basic level, there's two types of hot sauce. There's hot sauce that is pepper forward, where the peppers drive the sauce. And then there's hot sauce where the sauce drives the sauce, like all the other stuff. Um, and for the most part, I've been the sauce guy. Cause that's what I was as a, as a chef doing my thing, you know? Um, and now I'm kind of leaning a little, starting to lean a little bit more towards the pepper side, which I find really interesting. That's really interesting. I, I feel like the show has interviewing people has definitely changed my outlook on sauce and my thoughts about sauce uh, so much, but I hadn't really thought about the pepper versus other leading flavors. And, and I'm, I mean, obviously like a pepper forward, I make pepper forward sauces, but recently I've been playing more with how to drive the flavor with other ingredients and, and have the peppers. I mean, it's, it's not a lot of what we do, but, um, but we've definitely been playing around with more, more complex flavors. I should say, you know, all of our sauces are pretty straightforward for their ingredients. That's amazing. Cause that's one of the things that's inspired me is the stuff that you do. (laughs) (laughs) It's almost like there's a lot of options out there. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Well, uh, on that note, Do you have a favorite sauce from your lineup? And also, are there any sauces that you've tried to make, but they just didn't kind of work out and you get scrapped them? Uh, Well, my favorite sauce, I've got I've got. Three kind of four that I use most of the time, and that would be our Cajun. um, And I love that sauce so much. It's kind of a good all around sauce. Um, and I, I feel really happy with that cause I added fish sauce to it and garlic and, uh, and lemon and it just, it, it tastes really good on everything. Uh, and then lemon pepper and we've got two versions. We've got a mild and a medium, uh, medium hot and they are very, this is where like peppers make a huge difference. One is with Serrano. It's the milder one. And the other one's with habanero. And they are like completely different sauces, even though they have exactly the same ingredients and ratios of ingredients. The only difference is the pepper. Um, But I use them for different things. And then the last one would be uh, the one I use the most during a certain time of year. And that's our, uh, our bourbon peach. I love that sauce so much, but it doesn't go on everything. So yeah. Are there any from your lineup that, or any that you've tried and then, you know, didn't work out for you? (laughs) I've talked about this before. But the most notable one is uh, coffee pop. It was an energy drink I came across. <laughs> yeah, I, it's a delicious sauce. Like the people who found it and like went got through the marketing that my terrible marketing and actually used it are huge fans. Um, and we're really bummed when I took it off the the list. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a thing that had coffee and soda, and I made kind of a, a barbecuey one of the thinnest sauces I've ever made, 
Um, but uh, it just didn't. It was awful marketing. Energy drink, hot sauce. Everybody immediately thought Red Bull, and that sounded mm. awful. It was just a bad <laughs> idea on my part. <laughs> what is um uh, not not reading the next question yet? But what is your um process in coming up with a new flavor or new sauce? You know, I, I don't know. Um, I just, it's things will kind of connect. Um, my wife does the shopping mostly because I'll create new hot sauces and we've got nearly 40. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's things hit me. Uh, we did, uh, we're doing actually this summer, we're coming out with a watermelon curry. I was watching a British mystery show that's this thing called the show called uh, death in paradise with my daughter and we like to watch these kind of cheesy british mystery shows together and uh it's silly and in one of the episodes they had a actual caribbean dish called watermelon curry and i thought that's an odd thing Ooh, hot sauce and i made it and it's so good i had to yeah. play i really had to work at it because it wasn't working for a long time and i nailed it about a month ago and i'm so happy with it and it's going to be called queen of summer nice nice yeah. i like that <laughs> so uh so spike desert island hot sauce Am I supposed should to? Should I give the entire scenario? Yeah, should I? Should I? Uh, yeah, well, for about the listeners, question? we should. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I'm the not Zach. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Love you, Zach, if you watch this. <laughs> That'll be the question if he listens to this episode or not. <laughs> He'll listen to uh, it. <laughs> I love you, Zach. <laughs> we miss you, Zach. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, the. Um, uh, desert Island hot sauce. You're stuck on a desert. You can eat all the food you want, but you only have one hot sauce to put on it. What's it going to be? Um, so, you know, my answer is your <laughs> onion and uh, cilantro. cilantro onion. My God, I can't say it. But so I, I'm going to set that aside because I thought about this. I've said it a thousand times. So I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to bring in some different sauces. Uh, I'm going to say four that I would use that fit that bill. Because I, as I've said, they people can pick which ones they would like it to be, and I would want it to be one of these four. Uh, and I've got a couple of them here. This one, which also happens to be yours, oh yeah, <laughs> um, the right. uh, Duchess Mystery Pepper Sauce, which we yeah. you've told us about and finally sent me a bottle, and it is amazing. Oh my god, um, Zach's Ghost Racha. Yep. Okay, now outside of our little circle. Um, <laughs> Uh, down to ferments ghosted. I love this yep. sauce and it's a good kind of all around sauce. And then I don't have the bottle here cause I've gone through it, but, uh, uh, Palm and acre, um, the smoke, uh, smoke habanero is yeah. legitimately. I think that would be right up front. It's so good. And I just can pour it all over everything. Um, Clark, uh, the, the Duchess mystery pepper one that spike just held up mm -hmm. was, so um, good. <laughs> it's a um sorry just writing writing down a note that i remind to remind myself uh, but yeah so that um sauce is just a pepper vinegar salt hot sauce uh but the pepper is just so uh wonderful of a flavor and it's a it was an accidental pepper in one of our farm's fields um it was an entire greenhouse full of golden ghosts and this one plant just put up this totally different pepper that had mm -hmm the um almost the heat of a golden ghost but the sweet uh, fleshiness of a bell pepper interesting um and it was about halfway in between size wise so it was just fleshy and juicy and and thick walled and um but then had that like huge heat of a ghost so he's been growing it out every year but you know it's peppers don't grow true to type so it's been really interesting to kind of see how it develops each year but it just has really really cool flavor nice i went i so. wish you could have been there claire when i went around and had our staff try it the looks on their faces was amazing Just, <laughs> nice. you know i think a week or two ago i was describing um having we have a dessert hot sauce and having it on ice cream and and having people yeah. sample it and the look it was exactly the same just like nice. i didn't know that could do that it was yeah a, beautiful yeah. Yeah, no, I, I really, I really love that sauce. And we can't, we can't even make very much of it because it's only what they grow. And it was only one plant that produced it the first year. And obviously they're growing more now, but I think we got, I don't know, maybe 300 pounds last year or something like that. And they'll, you know, they're, I, I think Stephen is estimating that they'll have 
I think it was like six or 800 pounds this year. So yeah, it's, you know, we're, we're slowly building to, yeah. to where we can make more than just, and, and as a result, we actually don't really make anything besides that sauce with them because we have so little of it. Um, and it's just, you know, it, it, we would just hide it with other flavors. So yeah, awesome. nice. it's fun. See if I can get my hands on it somehow. <laughs> We, we do, I can, I can send you some, um, I can send you some, we've got, we, we do make it in pretty decent quantities. Um, and it, we do have it available to wholesale. Oh. Just people have to know it exists. Nice. So. <laughs> I'm Claire George. I own Butterfly Bakery of Vermont. We make hot sauce, mustard, cookies, and granola. And 100% of our products are made with Vermont ingredients. The thing that I hear most often from people is that my hot sauce tastes like the peppers that are in it. We do really simple recipes that don't get too crazy and nitpicky just to really accentuate the, the flavor of the peppers that are in there. The unique thing about our hot sauces is how much we feature the farm and the relationship with the farm and really um, bring the terroir of Vermont to our hot sauces. I am pretty sure I am the number one purchaser of Vermont grown chili peppers. I would love it if there would be a legitimate pepper market in Vermont where people would know Vermont for its peppers. We're all better for supporting each other. You know, and, and I think that part really shows itself with the collaborations that I do with the other businesses and the other farms that, that I love working together and coming up with new ideas and presenting each other with new challenges. And I think overall that's the attitude here. And I absolutely love it because that's my attitude. I try to live by life with love. The ingredients that I use, I would say that my values are reflected in that, um, that I use ingredients that, again, feel good, feel loving, feel supportive. The relationship with the farmer was how it all began. If I changed the reason for it being, if I went out and bought some commodity peppers, you know, it might not be as good. <laughs> You can find Butterfly Bakery of Vermont hot sauce, mustard, granola, and cookies at ButterflyBakeryVT.com. All right. Well, Spike, who inspires you and why? I, 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 that's it, 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 It's unfair to some, in, to some degree that I know all the questions because I wrote them all <laughs> or most of them. <laughs> um, and this, so I've got a list of people. Uh, Claire, you're right up there. I'm um, seriously. Oh. I mean, it's oh, been geez, such thanks. an honor working with you. Uh, <laughs> well, it's been great working with you too. Thank you. Uh, Zach, <laughs> of course. Um, God, we've been help inspiring each other for years now. Um, my business partner, Kevin probably has had not just the single biggest impact on my business life, but really a, a huge, huge impact on my life. He's such a kind person um, that you know, I, I, I see him make moves against business sometimes just to be kind to the people that he's worked with. Um, and I think it's amazing. Um, and, uh, Griffin, my other partner and Lori, uh, Kevin's wife and, and my wife, oh my God. Uh, so many sauces have been changed because my wife, uh, you know, she doesn't like very spicy food at all. Um, so that means a lot of our sauces aren't as spicy. Um, uh, I'm kind of leaning that way now and it kind of sucks cause I can't go, Hey, try this. Cause she'll say, <laughs> I'll feed her a sauce. And she, if it's really hot, she'll go, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, okay, <laughs> I, that's, that's not going to be one you're going to want to taste for me. Um, <laughs> But she's honest with me. And um, even when I don't agree with her, I usually end up changing something slightly in the sauce based on that. But uh, yeah, there's so many people in my life that, you know, I, I, I think I, Claire, Zach has talked um, about being sober. I've been sober 31 years. Um, and my friend Jamie and my friend Mike, uh, saved my ass. I mean, saved my life and taught me how to not be a, a piece of dirt, you know? Um, and my dad, that would be the last one. Uh, my dad went from being the one person I despised the most in my life to being my biggest hero and really giving me the, the avenue to, to clean up my life when I needed to. 
Um, so, you know, I'm 53, so there's a lot of people that have inspired me. It's a great way to live life to, to, um, to regularly take stock of, of the, the good things in life. Um, and I, I feel like it's, it's easy. I think the studies show that we notice bad things about six times more than we notice good things. Um, and to every once in a while, just kind of stop and take a mental snapshot of the good things. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And you kind of have to force yourself to do that. I find, cause it's easy to not. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the knots really just slam, slam you in the yeah. face. And I actually, when I'm trying to build better habits, I, um, just, you know, making sure to, I don't know, set something up the night before so I don't have to do it tomorrow or whatever the good habit is. I, um, I try to, the, when I do successfully do that the next day, when I'm, when future me is really happy, I try to just take a little mental snapshot of like, just, yep, I'm really grateful to past me, past me yeah, did a good job. Seriously. And then in the future, I'll be like, wait, future me is going to be really excited <laughs> about this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Great. <laughs> I need to do more of that. You're going to inspire me now. <laughs> <laughs> the world should be a better place. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Um, uh, hundred dollar hot sauce. Should we just like gab for a little while on the hundred dollar hot sauce? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, I mean, I just am all in on Duchess mystery pepper for that though. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, so I feel like, you know, I think, I think we've kind of talked about this being like a next year thing, like yeah. a 2025 thing. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that we need to start putting things in place now um, in 2024, because I feel like some of these processes that are going to warrant a hundred dollar hot sauce are going to be ones that take a lot of time. I agree. Uh, and we're going to have to figure out how to do it each in our separate areas and yeah. make it come to, I mean, we can ship things, so that's not. Yeah. Well, and maybe one thing too, is that I can go down to Dutch's farm and pick the, the peppers this year, if we wanted to do any like fermentation or anything on them, that it's going to take more time. Yeah. That, that's great. And, and we can also, I mean, so that way it also gives us flexibility. I can go down there, video it, do all of that. But then, um, and then if we decide to do that, you guys come out in the fall, then we can also go and pick peppers at that point as well. But if we're like, you know what, you know, April makes way more sense than anything else. Then we just still have the peppers and have the footage. And I like that. that. I think that's great. Cool. Yeah. And then we just got to figure out what else is going in there. I mean, that's yeah. just the beginning I really like the idea of barrel aged hot sauce. And I think that Zach's point about, or sorry, barrel aged hot sauce, but barrel aged vinegar. Um, I think Zach's point about not having it be alcohol based, like rummy or something like yeah. that, I think is really valid. Uh, I like the idea of buying a new barrel oh, and putting vinegar in it. I like that too. So, and there, um, I know. I, I, I get barrels for my, I do barrel aged vanilla and, and I get barrels oh, for that so and they're good. little tiny ones. It is so good. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do any other vanilla anymore. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, I, and I buy mini, I buy tiny, tiny barrels. Um, but I guess we'd need to decide what, but so I know where to buy barrels. I know where I can get some. Um, and I would need to decide what size we want. I mean, if we're doing a micro batch, that's like, 25 ish pounds of vinegar. So it's not, not a lot. Okay. Um, and, um, so something, something like that. Um, I'm also just, I haven't looked into it at all, but the idea of Koji fermentation just sounds. Uh, yeah. You know, and I actually messaged, <laughs> uh, there was a fermentation they started following us, but they didn't message me back. So I'm going to message them again. Uh, they, there was, I came across something on Instagram with these, uh, I forget the name of it, but I sent them a message. I'm like, Hey, we'd like to have you on the podcast. Um, yeah. And that was like all they did. Um, and they never got back with me, but I'm hoping they do because I'd really like to have some discussion about it on the podcast and maybe even do one just about that. Well, and, um, and I think I found uh, some Koji rice um, here in Vermont. Um, and so maybe mm. I'll just, Maybe I'll just buy it and I'll grind up a bunch of peppers and some salt and throw in the rice and just see what happens. What do you think about <laughs> a mustard in it? I think a mustard with oh. that with that pepper would ooh, be so good. It does sound good. I'm just, I feel like the mustard hot sauces don't do as well. And maybe I just 
don't do them particularly well, but we're about to discontinue our mustard hot sauce. Oh, really? Um, and so like, I am, we're just waiting for it to sell out is really where we're at. Yeah. But um, the, uh, I mean, they're just kind of, I don't know. It, I kind of, I feel like it, I feel like spicy mustards do really well, but mustard hot sauces, I don't love as much. Oddly, ours do well, but because I don't make them like a mustard. Um, and I think that might be yeah. why, because they are not, like I sent that we're, we're going to have the mustard queen on our, our podcast. Yeah. And I sent her our mustard sauces and she said, they're really good. Not very mustardy. And I'm like, yeah, but that's what people like when they come to our booth. They're like, I'm not usually a fan of mustard, but I like that. Right. I wonder if um, turmeric oh, might be turmeric might be so a way much. of bringing in that like yeah. mustardiness, but not quite mustard. I think that would be good, and do even doing it fresh would be so beautiful. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, we could yeah get some fresh turmeric. Yeah. That sounds cool. Yeah, I I'm think write so. Write this one down. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, fresh turmeric, um, koji ferment. Uh, goji ferment. That's a different thing. Um, oh. <laughs> that's just what autocorrect went with. Um, and then what do we say? Barrel aged vinegar. Um, uh, new barrel. And what was Zach uh, asking about? Um, what sauce was he talking about? He was talking about, oh my gosh, I wish he was here. We'll have to talk <laughs> about it again. I'm sure we'll talk about it yeah, many times. Yeah, absolutely. It was something he was talking about, and I don't remember which sauce. It was Japanese sauce, and it's, I, I'm blanking right now. Um, and then packaging, too. Yes. Um, I really like the idea of a wooden box. I do, too. Um, and I don't know. I We definitely have wood, woodworkers here in Vermont, but I, you know, I feel like we shouldn't be pulling everything from Vermont. <laughs> um, yeah, um, we have... I mean, we've got, obviously we're in the Northwest. There's beautiful wood, uh, we're in our area. Um, so I'm sure I could, I could come up with somebody here. Um, and I don't think Zach has that in Tucson. <laughs> so it would have, right. probably be on me on that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll start doing some research and see what we got around the area. Oh, you um, know what? We, we had Kenji on the podcast and he worked with, what's that guy, uh, he worked with another chef uh, that's on uh, Bon Appetit. I, I'm blanking on his name right now uh, to do uh, salt, the, you know, the salt box. What is it called? We, this is what I do, people. I <laughs> get halfway through a sentence and. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you look into the box? <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I'll do that. And um, we do also have something called Silva Curl here in Vermont, which is wood packing material. Um, and it is fantastic. Um, everything actually, like they, they like lock together. They're curled, like curled pieces of wood. And um, if you like pack it into a box and then you take a bottle of whatever and you just shove it into the, into the wood shavings and then lift it up, you just have like a perfectly shaped oh, hole. Wow. And it's like, it, it packs so well. We're actually having the guy from Silver Curl come down on Thursday because we're, we're in the process. We're we're revamping our entire shipping procedures, and we're looking to see if we can use that, like in all of our shipping, and not just our oh, like wow. fancy gift boxy stuff. I so love that. It's cool. That it's really really cool. cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It does make hot make hot sauces kind of dusty. So is that? Oh yeah. Just the wood dust. So, but I think it would look really nice. Yeah. Um, some of the other things I thought of. Something um, needs to oh. be with it. We need, we need to have a, some kind of thing. So it's, well, something somebody brought up is something after you finish the hot sauce, you still have something there. I th was that you, right. Clark? Yeah. No, um, uh, but I do remember someone mentioned yeah. that. And I think that that makes sense. We we need to have something with it. Of course, you got the box, but there should be something. I don't know. Yeah, because someone was saying, what, you got to bring two bottles with every one so they can keep yeah. one. And, <laughs> and, and you're like, well, then it's a $200 hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, a metal, an ornament, a microphone. <laughs> um, <laughs> we did talk about wax, putting dipping in them in wax oh, and yeah. putting our stamp yes. on the top. I do think we should I do think, that. I think, yes. I think we should do that. Um, the one other thing that I thought of too, and this would exceed the $100 price range, and I don't even know if it's possible, but if it would 
um, maybe for a select few of the bottles, if we could get a glass blower to produce something that we could Ooh. still get a hermetic seal on. That would be wonderful. I mean, it's worth looking look, into for yeah. the sauce in general. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know what would be involved in getting a hermetic seal. Like they might just be able to do a form for the top and yeah. we can put a cap on it. I just, I don't know what the capability is. And then I have to imagine it's going to be pretty expensive to get something like that made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but man, if that bottle looked really cool. Oh. Yeah. I mean, honestly, even if we just had like a couple of $250 bottles, yeah, <laughs> just like a couple of them. <laughs> Gotta have, I, I mean, one of those we would probably have to shell out for Vic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the for the and, museum, and, and one for up here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um, and let, uh, like I mean, definitely like using our mill. I think yes. that like I think would be nice. Um, what else? I mean, it's funny. I've I've kind of made a point of trying not to think too much about it for a reason because I, I've wanted to take in what people have been giving us, but I do feel yeah. like I'm at the point where I need to start really doing some research and looking yeah. into, so I've got a book of sauces. Uh, I think it was written by a pretty, I don't remember which chef wrote it, but it's, it's like a, it's a book of sauces. And I was going to look into that and see like some really high end sauce making and see if there's any way to incorporate that. Um, kind of want to have a couple more chefs on because they'll be able to take us down that road a little bit more. Although I think Kenji was really interesting because he was, you know, he, he was just like, like people are crazy. Why would I ever buy a hundred dollar hot sauce? <laughs> <laughs> like, I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, not the answer sense. I thought he'd say. <laughs> right. <laughs> I wonder if there's anything that we could pull in from chefs, because I do feel like part of hundred dollar hot sauce part of the process the, the those processes that create really expensive really high-end food are processes that take ages years to learn and develop and become good at and i wonder if there are things that there are chefs or makers who could make for us to incorporate into oh, the sauce yeah you know I, I you know who i should talk to um a couple people uh i've got a friend who is very good friends with a lot of well-known chefs, but also Chef AZ, Andrew Zimmern. Yeah, um, yeah, That totally. guy knows everything about everything. It's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. I I actually have a friend, I hadn't thought of this. I have a friend who um, used to own a restaurant. She's a writer. She um, She's really, uh, she wrote a, a book about flavor and um and I, I, I should get her. I mean, I know that she will laugh at the idea, uh, hard, but, um, but, uh, pick her brain about ideas for, um, for like complex processes. Yeah. Complex. That, and that's what I know. was trying to think of because I, my, my brain used to, like, it's not been in that state where, cause when you make sauces, I, I worked best at saute. I wasn't, I wasn't as good at running the line. I couldn't do that as well at saute. I just, my brain was in, in heaven. Um, I'd have, you know, eight burners and a flat top and, you know, stuff behind me and, and not move. And I, my, it just clicked, but I haven't been in that, that kind of mindset. Now making a sauce is something that takes a little more time and it's, you know, it, it's, it's just made differently and I could do it really quick with something really good in the old days. So I just need to kind of need to get in the kitchens what I need to do. There you go. Yeah. I wonder also, Oh, um, those, was it the pequeno peppers? The ones that are native to Arizona? Uh, is that what they're called? The ch chiltepine? Chiltepine. That's it. I don't know why I think it was pequeno. Um, the chiltepine. I think that one is cool too, just as, a pepper that's not often in, uh, that's not often in hot sauces because it's a pain in the butt pepper. Um, and yeah. I don't know, I don't know when those are in season. Um, but we should get, we, we should get Zach to get us some. I would love to try them. And I, my guess is just 
when I think about what a little tiny pepper might taste like, it feels like it would be a quite a nice counterpoint yeah. to the Duchess mystery pepper. I can tell you like this, when you get there, what it is, is uh, it's like black pepper. If you imagine, oh, wow. but yeah. really hot, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, not, not as not habanero, but cl- not, not far off. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it's, it's, Really good. Um, I would love to see those smoked. Not too yeah. much, just a little hint of smoke with that would be beautiful. Like, like a maple wood smoke? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we need to make sure that Zach gets us someone there in season. Yeah, and that's something Zach can take care of there. That that would be yeah. something on his end. Ooh, I like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Should we move on? I think I- probably we've. Oh, I, I got one more question about that. And I don't know if yeah. you can answer this because it sounds like you're still in info gathering, you know, mode. But if you had to take a, a guess as to what percentage you are to knowing where you're going with it, like how far along do you think you are? Are you still, you know, you sound like you're getting pretty close to having a good idea of what this could be, you know, where, how far do you think you are no. along? No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. okay. Um, so we, we're throwing out ideas at this point. And usually when you're doing that, like 95%, I probably higher, uh, just ends up falling yeah. aside. Um, I know it can't be a simple sauce because it's got to be fairly complex. It's And also some of the stuff is going to have to be a little bit more high dollar, like the vinegar. Um, if we were to add, we talked a little bit about some really expensive soy sauces. I don't know if that would fit with this, but it might depending on, I mean, yeah. soy sauce can be well, really fucking expensive. Well, and that's a good example of what I mean of the having something that has a process behind it that we don't have to be the experts to know yeah, how to make it. I agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm. You know, there's a YouTube guy. You know, sometimes you you get lucky if you send something out to somebody. There's this guy on YouTube that, like, he doesn't. He's. I don't think he's ever been a chef, but he. I don't remember his name. He's a French guy. Everybody probably knows who I'm talking about. But I like his watching his stuff because he will take. I think ramen. He did ramen. No, it was fried rice. He took fried rice. Yeah, he did ramen too. And he will go from the very beginning and then he will go all the way to working with masters until he nails it. And, uh, and it's really interesting. I'm going to reach out and just see if we get a hold of that guy. You never know. Cool. I mean, it'd be worth a shot, right? Sometimes, awesome. you know, sometimes you send a <laughs> message to somebody and you end up doing Alton Brown's hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. I uh, just uh, just saw an order come through where somebody just ordered five Duchess Mystery peppers, uh, just like literally right across my screen. You think we were live or something? <laughs> yeah, they're right, right, exactly. I'm like, did they? Are they listening? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was me right oh. here. Just you know. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor Balance Heat is brought to you by High Desert Sauce Co. out of Tucson, Arizona. Zach is the owner and creative mind behind High Desert Sauce Co.'s hot sauces. He says, at High Desert Sauce Co., we make sauces that we love. The balance of bold heat and fresh flavor is the heart of our philosophy. We keep it simple by using the best ingredients we can get our hands on and letting the natural flavors run the show. High Desert Sauce Co., just the good stuff. Visit High Desert at hdsauceco.com. So I think we're at hot sauce, hot takes. Well, you've you- heard all my hot takes, but I have, <laughs> I have a, I thought about this, and I did some some extra research. We have we talked a lot about xanthan gum recently, and and Claire, you said something, and I don't, I don't think I, mean, I know for a fact you didn't mean it in any bad way, but you're, you're <laughs> um, you the way you said something, I, I thought. Well, wait a minute, which was maybe you can skirt around the and go with this. Yeah. And I thought, but why? You know what I mean? Because I don't think there's anything wrong with xanthan gum. And so I did more research on xanthan gum this week. And I there's a lot of stuff on either side. But the one thing I did come up with was that, yeah, it does upset people's stomach in large amounts. And it really mm-hmm. it has to be quite a bit. Um, I think I figured out it had to be around 150 bottles of hot sauce <laughs> using the amount that we put in. 
Um, mm -hmm. But there, there's some benefits that people don't know. It actually slows down the digestion of uh, sugar so that um, it actually helps people to digest sugar better. Um, it, it has cancer fighting properties. Um, it lowers cholesterol. It's not the devil. And I think it gets treated like that in, because of the bad hot sauces out there. But I think there's a lot more good hot sauces using it now. That whole mindset needs to stop. And I don't know, like, okay, Hot Ones is Hot Ones. And I respect them for what they do because they've done a lot for our, our, our industry. And if they don't want xanthan gum in their sauces, I get it. I don't agree with it, but I get it. And if they asked me for a sauce, I would say, you know, I would love to do, I, I would love to do Hot Ones. <laughs> but and I would gladly switch over to uh, chia seeds. Chia. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, I would do that for the sauce for them, but I'd still keep xanthan gum. I like the what xanthan gum does when you use it properly. You know, if you cook everything with a microwave, all your food's going to be shit. You know, but if you steam vegetables, it actually steams vegetables better than steaming vegetables in, on the stove. You know, use something properly, it works great. And to clarify about my point about skirting around, and, and then you just and then you just ask why. I think it's obviously not because you feel like you should or yeah, or anything. It would be because customers have an issue with it whether or not they should have an issue with it. And and I guess it's a decision about if you want it to be your point of education, you know, if yeah. you want people to understand why it's okay. My um, counter to that just would be yeah. that I've never had a customer say anything about the xanthan gum in our sauces. Not once. Yeah. It's always hot sauce people. Although, to counter that, uh, <laughs> I... Um, I I don't know if I would if there if there's an ingredient that I don't like in a sauce I'm usually just going to kind of put it down and keep yeah. going, um, you know. So generally, you'll hear it from somebody along the way. I've heard about every other ingredient, every other ingredient. <laughs> oh my God, uh, it was garlic a lot. Oh my God, uh, black pepper, uh, red peppers, everything, everything. But, you know, uh, my, my thing about it is, is that uh, I just feel like giving in too much to that, they're, they're, you know, the, everything's a, a middle ground and giving in too much to that would change our sauces in ways that I wouldn't care for. Right. So. Right. And, and that would be a reason to not want to make changes. I mean, if if you can achieve what you can achieve and not piss off whoever gets pissed off by yeah. these things, it seems like it would be beneficial. But if you, to not piss them off, you have to make changes that you feel aren't, aren't right for your product, then that's not, you know, yeah. that's not helpful or good. <laughs> so I agree. When, or like, how did the whole, you know, hubbub around Xanthan gum, like how did that start? Is that just because, you know, sauce makers started using it too much to dilute their product or like, has it, it always been, ugly, you yeah. know, controversial or? No, I, I think it's, I think it's people diluting. I mean, just really watering something down and then thickening it back up with gums. And, and, you know, you can, that happens with all sorts of foods. I mean, it, most commonly it happens with sugar. I mean, that's, you know, sugar is often, I mean, not necessarily for hot sauces, just in food in general, sugar is immensely cheap and will make the product cost less. You add more sugar, it costs less money to make yeah. and people and people like it. Um, and so there's a lot of filler ingredients like that. And, and just like sugar is not inherently bad. Neither is, neither is xanthan gum, but it got misused so much. And I've like, I've had a lot of sauces that have xanthan gum and that is just weird. Yeah. I don't see salsa, the point in, in my that. Opinion. That is, yeah. that makes no well, sense to me. Separation. They just don't want it to separate. Yeah. But we have a, we make a salad dressing for a Copac client and um, they are they, like separation is an interesting one when they sell like the natural food stores, everybody's like, yeah, of course, separation. My salad dressing is going to separate. And now that they're selling more in the like middle tier grocery stores, 
people are complaining about it more. And so now they're working more xanthan gum into the product to keep it from separating. Well, and I think that's where it all comes from for me. Um, my, when we started, I would have sauces separate and it made me fucking crazy. I mean, it really, because as a chef, when you put a dish out, it has to look good, you know, and that separation, I, you know, I remember making uh, salmon and we would put a little, it was a, a riff on a beurre blanc and I would make that. And when I was early on doing it, I would break the sauce sometimes. And, uh, and, and it, I learned it, it got ingrained in me. It would make me nuts. You know, I had to make it right. So it would go out looking right. Um, and so, you know, that's just what I have to do. Um, and I don't dislike it. I actually, I don't like it when I'm pouring a sauce and it clumps up here. And so you're trying to get it out and, um, and it, it doesn't have, you're not getting an even coat on the food you're putting it on. Um, whereas using the proper amount of xanthan gum, you can get a really nice flow with it, uh, and not have that. So I actually prefer it in a sauce. But it's not that it's not a deal breaker for me, you know. It's just I I don't like sauces that get stuck when you're trying to pour them. Yeah, those make me angry. I don't. I I, I won't. I have so many fr- so many sauces in my fridge that aren't going to fight me. Yeah, that I I just don't want to eat the sauces that are going to fight. Yeah, me. and sometimes <laughs> they're not even super thick sauces. They just have enough particulates in there that they always get caught up at the top, and it's like yeah. it also. When the vinegar starts dropping as you're using it and the stuff stays up at the top, that stuff can go bad and start making everything else bad. You don't want that. That's yeah. always the thing that discolors first. So, yeah. 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 There you go. Hot sauce show and tell. Yeah. Let's do it. I think I just showed it by accident. <laughs> What'd you bring, Spike? Ooh, I get to go first this time. <laughs> Colorful Colorado Creations. So Derek, we had on a few weeks ago. He sent me this. No, I didn't. He didn't send me this. I bought this and he tried to give it to me and I wouldn't let him. Uh, He, uh, I bought this at Fiery Foods and I hate this sauce, obviously. Um, (laughs) My goodness, it's good. Oh, really good. Uh, It's got red pepper in it. Um, It's got just an, he's like really good at using it. He's got a deft hand at using peppers and it's really, really nice. Um, I, I highly recommend it. Nice. I've got a couple sauces from them that I've still got to try. So looking forward yeah. to that. What did you bring Clark? All right. So I have wicked provisions, smoked onion, chipotle. Ooh. Nice. I have not tried it yet. As you see, nice. it's still closed. So smoked onion. I don't think I've heard of anybody else doing that. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Claire? The, um, so because Zach isn't here, ghost of saffron. Oh Yeah. <laughs> That sauce is so fucking good. You know, and it's funny because, you know, in the hot sauce group on Facebook, everybody goes nuts about this. And I generally take a really dim view to what everybody else is going nuts about. Years ago, it was the um, SoCal guac sauce. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. Uh, And everybody went nuts about it. I bought it. And it tasted awful. And I like MSG. And that was just an MSG bomb. Yeah, when it's overdone, it's awful. Oh, it's so awful. And you know what's hilarious too is that somebody said something like that, something to that effect in the group saying like, ah, everybody really likes this, but it wasn't for me. And and I chimed in and said, and said, yeah, it really wasn't for me too. Um, and I said, you know, something along the MSG. It was, I, I'm always very diplomatic in that group. I definitely yeah. did not say anything really like whatever. Uh, discovered that the guy, the owner of the, the he's the former owner of the, the um, of SoCal blocked me. Oh God. <laughs> And I only knew because my husband was like, yeah, he's like posting all the time. And I'm like, I see nothing. I have no idea. And I'm like, wow, you can't take somebody just dis- like fairly disliking your sauce. Yeah. Like that's, that's some, uh, that's some sensitivity. That's somebody there. that's <laughs> never worked in a kitchen, in a real kitchen. Right. Holy shit. You, I mean, a hundred percent of foods out there, there is somebody who does not, wow. does not like it. hundred percent. It's like spiders in houses. hundred percent of houses have them. 100% of foods are disliked yeah. by somebody. <laughs> but Ghost of Saffron, I've really been oh, enjoying God, since so he good. sent me a bottle. This was a second bottle he sent me, so I haven't opened it yet. But the um, but no, it's I find myself just reaching for it multiple times. Yeah. I'm not even a big Saffron fan, and I think it's just a nice level of Saffron. Yeah, I agree. 
Well, it sounds like both of you have already tried yours, so <laughs> I'm gonna have to oh, yeah. give this one a go. I'll give it. I'll give mine yeah. a swig. Mm. So, Clark, is that a first first time of having that yes. sauce? First of Wicked Provisions at all, actually. I've got a couple of their sauces, but that is really good. Yeah, I like that. Very the, uh, I, mild. I am curious part. about that smoked onion, just because I really have never <laughs> never come across anybody else using it. Um, does it say what they smoke it on or anything like that? Smoked sweet onions and fresh garlic combined with the flavors of chipotle, roasted peppers, and a touch of maple make an amazing, smoky, savory, hot sauce good on just about everything. Nice. All right. Nice. I want to get a smoker. Tasty. You've made me want to get a smoker, Claire. Highly, highly recommend. And you know what? Like, I would recommend getting an electric smoker. Um, I know that people, I, you know, I mean, I feel like it's driving an automatic versus driving a stick. Like, sure, you can do fancier things with, like, your own built smoker. But, like... I, I just want it to produce yummy smoke yeah. things. Uh, like I don't, I like, and then you can control it and you can, you know, repeatable and all of that. Yeah. And we have a really nice inexpensive one here at home um, that it takes chips. Uh, so you go through a lot more of them, um, but it has a, um, it has a, you put in the chips from the side. So you don't have to open the door oh, like to do that. it. And so if you have to open the door, you're going to dry out your food. Um, so it's, I mean, for vegetables, it's not as big of a deal, but generally speaking, you want as much moisture to stay in. So you can put new chips in repeatedly during the smoking without drying out your food, which is really nice. Mm. The one I use at work is the best smoker. <laughs> it's a commercial smoker and it, it goes, it holds all the moisture in so um, tightly that it, that, that the smoke doesn't have to, it doesn't have to burn as hot. Um, and so you, we put chunks in there and they last the full eight hours oh. with no issue. Um, and so we just, we don't have to open the door or anything. And then we actually get, when we smoke onions, we get five gallons of smoked onion juice I love from one smoker full of, of onions. So I'm dying. I would really like to be able to do, there's so many things I've wanted to smoke. Um, and you know, I, 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 I want a smoker. This is what you've done to me. I want a smoker <laughs> and I want a mill. <laughs> That's my, yeah. you know, my wish list. I told Kevin that the other day. This is my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was just, I was spending a large chunk of today looking at like labeling equipment and bottling equipment, and like I, I need to talk to Zach some more because I, I feel like he's always good at finding deals on, you know, good yeah, quality equipment that's in good shape, and I, I just am like. I'm so frustrated with my labeling line and I just, I just want to throw it all out the window and like, I, but I also don't want to spend money on a new labeling line right now. So I I've got a, a label or not label a equipment company that I buy from. That's really great and has really reasonable prices for high quality equipment. Um, that I bought a bunch of other pieces of equipment from them. So I reached out to them just to see about their lab. They've got three different labelers that could work for me. And just see how much they are. I need to, I mean, that's, that is genuinely the next step for us is to get that taken care of. We've got the steam jacketed kettle. We've got a bottle filler, but it's one of the Chinese ones. Um, I know that's going to be in there, um, but we can also use it. We can use our kettle in that, yeah. you know, um, and then also, uh, so the, the bottling or the labeling line, we don't have to have the shrink bander. Um, so right. I, you know, that's, that's a huge cost taken out of there so just being able well, to we, do, we still hand apply our neck bands anyway oh yeah so there's that but um but honestly you know with your filler i mean unless you have specific complaints about it most fillers are chinese made even if they're sold by an american company um and and i would say to you know it like so we got ours from a company in Canada um, who for the most part is good, um, but it is still Chinese made parts. This company out of Florida that we buy from on other equipment, they, it, it is also all Chinese, but it's priced. It, it is priced to reflect that as opposed to being a high price thing that they're kind of pretending isn't made overseas. And they, and then they've got all of the, the the parts spare parts and everything and all the support when you reach out to them um you know we get our um, heat shrink tunnel from them and we've had to replace the the heating elements on it a couple times and we just order them off the website and we got our parts and it just makes it really convenient so i 
you know, in, if you've got specific complaints about your filler, like, sure, replace it. But um, I wouldn't necessarily expect things to be better. Yeah, if it's that's kind of my thinking. A Chinese on made filler. Yeah. So I figure. And, and that's been my fear about getting a new labeling machine is that, like, I feel like they're kind of like printers. They all just kind of suck. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't want to spend $10,000 and have it still suck. We've still got the little tabletop one and we've actually got two and I got to get, I'm, I, 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 one of them's down and I, I'm like, should I get it fixed or should I just try and get, you know, a line? So I, I don't know. I just want to have a line. I think it would, it would save us a lot. We use a hand roll one a lot. We actually have two semi-automatic ones and they suck and they're just awful. Like they just like they, I, I like the manual one better than the semi-automatic. Our, ones. our, our, the one we have has been fantastic and we liked it so much. We got a second one. Um, and I'm glad we did. Cause when they, you know, you always want to have as two of it, everything as best you can. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, mine's supposed to be good. And for whatever reason, they just, you know, it'll put out two labels or it'll, um, or it'll put out, it won't put out a label or put it on, I don't know. Yeah. They just, you just end up fighting with it all the time. And the manual one, you just don't because it's manual. You just turn the crank and then it, the label's on That's there. awesome. So Spike, what's next for you and where do you see uh, your company going? So I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I think, uh, when Erica asked us what's next for us. <laughs> um, so I've, and I've talked about, we've done, we're doing the sauce with Andrew Zimmern. Uh, that's for the giving kitchen. Um, the giving kitchen is an organization that helps, uh, food service workers as I was one, uh, in need, um, with uh, su substance abuse issues and a death in the family or being hurt. And it's, it's a wonderful organization. I'm really excited about that. Um, uh, we are switching our line over from uh, plastic to bottle or to uh, from glass to plastic. Um, and that's been a huge undertaking. Uh, it's, it's a lot. And, you know, there's people I, I, I had to morally go over that, which was it was tough for me. Um, but where we're at in the country, it's just the better thing to do. Um, and then um, we've got uh, well, I just today made changes to our website that I'm, I'm excited about. Um, we've traditionally done these, we had, because you have the ability to, we use Wix and you can do packs up to six where they can choose whichever ones. Um, but it makes it hard to see what's selling the best because they're, they're just options in there that you randomly put in. You can't keep your inventory in there very well with the, the way that their packs are. So we are changing over to a tier system for if you spend this much, you get this much of a discount. Um, and I, I have it up at the top and I've been using it uh, as Clark would know, I've used it for our wholesale and people have responded well to it. I'll notice that they'll, Oh, uh, if I spend this little bit more, I get a bigger discount. And so uh, I thought I'm going to give this a shot and see. Last time we got rid of packs, our sales dropped pretty dramatically. Um, so I, I'm a little worried about it, but I think this might be good for everybody and actually better for our customers. Yeah, we do a discount if you buy a case of hot sauce. Um, and, and it used to be really horribly done on the website. You would have to like buy the mixed case and then tell people and then say in the comments what you wanted to be in the case. And it was just wildly confusing and it didn't work well. And finally kind of made a ch change like that, that had it apply automatically. Yeah. Put 12 in your cart, you just get the discount. Yeah. I, I really like that. I, I guess it's a fairly new thing on Shopify. We, we use Wix, but both of them do it now. Um, yeah. And so it's great that you can actually add those tiers if you want. And uh, you know, I, I, I'm really grateful for it because it's going to make it so that we can do so much more for our customers with that. Yeah, that's interesting because I've, I've thought about doing something similar. My thought was on the number of bottles that you buy as opposed to the, the, you know, amount, but I haven't, I haven't been able to figure out how to do that necessarily. So, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I have to tell you that was one of the things. Oh, so I, I have been saying dollar amount cause that's what I had planned to do. Today, I don't know. See, see, one of the things I like about Wix is they'll always do these little these little updates here and there. And then you'll find, oh, now I've got all this I can do. 
So the last time I looked at this, it was a dollar amount. Now you can put items. So hmm. I actually changed it at the last minute. So just before I came on to do this podcast, it's I've got two. You buy two, you get a 5% discount. You buy four, you get a 10% discount. You buy eight, uh, no, seven, you bet you get a 15% discount and 12, you get 20. Interesting. Um, I like that. Yeah. Clark, do you, is your site completely self-built or are you on a platform? It's Shopify. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, I, um, uh, I can tell you what app I use on Shopify okay. to do that. That's what I figured is it'd uh, have to be an app. I just haven't. It's a, uh, oh, actually it's a discount yard. Okay. Discount. Yard. Um, and it's, and you, there's all sorts of, I, I know I could do way more with discount yard than I do. I just use it for that. And it allows discounts to be stacked. So I think Shopify natively will let you do a buy this, get this, yeah. um, or that, that sort of, or buy this many, do this many. But we also regularly have discounts and sales right. and that sort of thing. And we want those still apply. So Discount Yard lets me stack those and only those. So I can keep from letting other discount codes stack. It's only those that stack. Yeah, the buy this, get that in Shopify, for some reason, is confused the heck out of me. I never was able to get it. <laughs> I don't know if it's just because I, you know, as a retailer, have a large amount of SKUs or, or what it, whatever it was. I just was never able to get it to work the way I want, which... I thought was just simple. If you have one thing in your cart, you know, it's regular price. If you have two things, you get a little disc, you know, and I just, I don't know. I never could get it to work the way I wanted it to. <laughs> I can, in Wix, I can do you, I can do, it's actually a separate area to do regular discount, like a, mm. a sale. Um, and then they've got a, another area. They're both kind of in the same district, I guess you'd say uh, they're on the same block, but they're two different buildings. Um, so, you know, uh, if you want to go into the coupons is what they call it. You can go into there and set up a regular sale, but this is a, this is something separate where I can set up a tiered thing. It was really nice. Nice. Like Whichever one is the better discount. That's what they get. The, uh, Spike, do you have questions for us? You know, I think I've asked you all the questions. <laughs> I mean, I, I text you questions all the time. Right. I, I try, I genuinely, oh, I actually, I do have a question for you. I have, I wish Zach were here. I, well, I know his though too, um, which is, I, I, but I, what is your hobbies outside of hot sauce? Tell me about Claire outside of hot sauce. Yeah. Uh, well, I crochet. Uh, I was crocheting with my older daughter who loves to crochet but has no patience for following a pattern. So she'd do like a half of a round and then, and then just decide that she's putting it away. Um, so that's what today was. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I'm a mom, two kids. Um, I hike a lot or I don't hike as much as I used to because kids, but, um, I really like climbing mountains and going for walks. Um, walking sounds like a boring hobby, but it is my favorite thing to, to do in the world. Um, uh, yeah, I, I like sewing. I like, I like creating things. I've just always liked making things. So, and I, and if they can be functional, that's even better. So I've in crocheting, I've gotten into woobles cause it makes little plushies that I can give to my kids. Um, and if I had all the spare time in the world, I would do all the construction on this house. Um, I, the basement that I live in right now, I was the one who finished it. Or I live in, I don't live in here. The basement that I'm in right now, um, I finished it. It was an unfinished basement when I bought the house and I built the walls and, um, and I didn't know how to build walls at that time. I was dating a guy who did. So he taught me how to build the walls, um, and, uh, and put in the floors and, um, window, oh, new windows, right? Because they weren't egress windows that, before. So I put those in. Um, and my husband would be a happy renter forever. And it's always hilarious when some tradesman comes over to do some work and they just talk to him instead of me. And, and he gives them a funny look and, and then looks at me and it's like, can you answer that? Because I have no idea what they just said. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I like, I like making things and doing things. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you, Clark? So you're saying there's something other than work and hot sauce and <laughs> I don't know what you're, <laughs> no, um, you know, tabletop gaming, board games, card games. Um, that's probably my number one hobby. Uh, it gives me a good excuse to, you know, get together with my friends, which as you get older, you realize is harder and yeah. harder to yep. do. <laughs> um, so that's probably, you know, that's definitely number one. 
Um, as weird as it sounds, coding websites is also another one of my hobbies. Um, we might talk about that in a second here. Um, you know, but <laughs> that is something that I, I've done for a day job in the in previous, you know, job roles, and it's not as fun when you have, you know, requirements and deadlines. And I just like to get in there myself and tinker and and just kind of, you know, almost like the way you guys describe how you build hot sauces. I I just, you know just kind of like to see what I can uh, conjure together. <laughs> uh, so those are probably my two biggest hobbies. You know, it's, what? oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, Clark, um, you know, I used to be a computer programmer before this, and I like kind of the same things about programming as I like about cooking mm -hmm. um, and baking. Like it's, I like that whole just creation kind of taking, taking an idea or taking pieces or taking something that wasn't something and turning yes. it into something. Yeah. And then having it become something that is totally unrelated to what you meant by it, having it become something to somebody else is just like the, I love it when I'm shopping and I see one of my items on the like belt for the person in front of me and they have no idea who made it or why <laughs> it's just yummy and has meaning to them. And I just give me the greatest joy. Absolutely. I love, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Spike? What about me? Um, I, uh, I, so for our company, well, actually in the other room right now, our friends are starting to show up. Uh, I already told them I'd be doing this for a while. And by 6.30, we're going to be playing some games and hanging out. And so that's really nice. Some of the people that work for us and that they we're all friends. So that's really nice. Um, but also uh, I like, so I built our websites. I love doing that. I do the, uh, I don't do the, well, some of them, but most of them, I don't do the actual graphics on our, uh, on our bottles, but I do everything else, the layout, all of that is me. Um, and I love doing that. Um, I do something called the hot sauce games, um, which I'll be hopefully get done editing the last season, but we do these, uh, I, I just ripped off the, the British show taskmaster and made it hot sauce themed. <laughs> And Taskmaster. Oh, I love that show so much. <laughs> uh, so great. basically I just made it hot sauce themed and we have a blast and I get all these local people. Uh, it's teams of two. They compete. Um, and then the winner gets a one of a kind hot sauce made just for them. We go to the co-op here. We buy all the ingredients together. We go back to the breakfast club and we make six bottles for them. And then That's awesome. oh, it's so much fun. And then they get, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but they get a, a trophy. It's you, if you've seen Taskmaster, they have a golden head. Well, that's what we yeah. have. It's our logo uh, head, the skull, and it's the head itself is this big. That it's it's huge. It's life size. Um, they, so they get that too, and it's it's just so much fun. So I do that uh, and rope people as usual, like this podcast, into doing silly and insane things. <laughs> That is awesome. <laughs> Clark. Yeah. I'm going to turn the tables for a second. So uh, we've talked about doing uh, a website with uh, where we just highlight sauces that are, that uh, give to charities and Clark is making one for us as part of our website. Can you take it away Clark and talk about it a little bit? Sure. Yeah. I was actually going to have you do that, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Um, it's called Heat with Heart. And as Spike mentioned, it's a website that we're, you know, that I'm putting together with the, the help of the Flavor Balance Heat uh, podcast team. And it's to help promote and bring awareness to different charities and benefits, um, you know, hot sauces that are made to, to um, highlight some of the wonderful charities that you've heard on this podcast. And, and, um, you know, there's, as you've seen from your guests and so many others in the hot sauce world, it's like they've come to this world, uh, this industry, you know, a lot of them through prior adversity or hardships or, or what have you. And I think that's inspired a lot of, of their creativity in the kitchens and, and to see so many of them give back, to their communities and to organizations that are important to them. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. And, and I think, you know, I can't take credit for the idea. Spike was the one who, who approached me with it, but I think it's such a wonderful idea to, you know, get all these together in one place where you can see 
a list of all these, you know, different sauce makers and the organizations and charities that they support and, you know, give to those causes, buy those sauces to support them. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a really fantastic idea. And I'm surprised, you know, no one else has, has thought of it before. <laughs> and I think, I, so I, I wanted to be able to put up a website or a, an email, um, but I don't have one yet. So for that, I, I want to keep our booking separate from this. So uh, I think by next week, we should have an email uh, address for it. Yeah. So people so, can submit. So that's what I was going to ask. So I, I think, you know, anyone who has one of those can can then email in to to that email address. Right. And, and yeah. um, you know, be considered for for inclusion on the website. Um, and uh, if you in the meantime, if you want to DM through like Instagram, uh, we can make that happen. Uh, it's still being built, but we can add you in the initial, you know, opening. And do we have any sort of demo site to look at yet? Or where, where are we? Oh, with that did now? we not send one to Claire? Oh my gosh. It's so ah, awesome. Yeah. I feel so left out. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, I sent it to spike, uh, it was late, late last night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to get his thoughts before, um, you know, just to make sure I was on the right track. Um, but, but yes, there, there is a, a demo site up. And, and I think, I mean, Spike, these air the Thursday, like about two weeks almost, two weeks. right? So, so we've got a little I, bit of time to. I, so I would say by the time this airs, the website should, should be fully out there. Um, and it'll just be heatwithheart.com. Which, as we've talked about, is did you, unless you figure this out, it's going to go to our website for the podcast but there'll be a link on there that you can yep. go right into yep so it's going to be hosted on the flavor balance yeah. heat website yeah. okay. wix yeah. is what we used and the one thing that wix can't do and i wish they could wix they're really good about listening so <laughs> um I, i've made suggestions that they've actually implemented so you never know but uh you can't um you can't have two different domains go to two different pages on a website. And I, I get it. They don't, because they want you to, they want you to pay for another one. And, and it is something I would like, to, I want to look at that a little bit um, spike because I, because you, the, what I, what I gathered and we're I, we might get into a little bit of the weeds here. So, um, but That's right. it seems like Wix is its own domain registrar because a lot of places it's it, when you register a domain through like Squarespace or, or through Shopify, they use a third party domain registrar. When I look at domains, I that think are they use two from, cows. I'm oh, pretty okay. sure. I'm okay. pretty sure. Cause when I look at the, the, the who is information, it actually says it's registered to Wix as opposed to when I look at like my, my Shopify, you know, URL, it's, it's, a, it has a different name in there for it anyways. Um, so I'd just be curious to look if we can set up some sort of redirects to, to get it to the right place. I, I trust I it if well, it can and, happen. And I would imagine that, that Wix would not have to be the registrar. So we could transfer the, regis the registrar to yeah. Namecheap or something and then, and then set up a redirect from there. I may have suggested that to Spike and, and he jumped the gun. But, <laughs> I um, did, yeah. It's my fault. <laughs> I, it was like a week later. It's not hard to change, yeah, especially before the site goes up. Then yeah. it's a lot easier. It was like a week later and heatwithheart.com was available and I just bought it. You wanted to, yeah, grab it. Yeah. And I think, Claire, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when you transfer a domain over to a different registrar, it still keeps the, like, if he's got it for a year, it's, you, you don't, you're not giving up that, that chunk of time that he's already got it registered for, right? Even if. Oh, right. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, I. Because I think when I. No, I think, I, I think that. Do they have to refund you? When I've done it in the past, and it could be specific to whichever, you know, wherever you're moving it to, but they've actually added on. So, like, let's say I have six months left of my current, you know, they've added that on to I'm, I'm purchasing it. They, they made me purchase the, a year from the new domain registrar, but then they added on the six months that I currently have. But again, that could be specific to each one that might be different. I, I'm not sure if there's a rule or, or whatever around that yeah, it, it probably is specific to i mean but that's probably a standard thing yeah. to you know to just to lure people away 
Um, I've only transferred registrars once. I, I transferred from GoDaddy to Namecheap Me too. some years ago. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Namecheap is so much better. Um, <laughs> the, um, and, and I don't, I don't remember if there was anything I might've been near. I have so many domains that, yeah. that all like all cycle at different times. Yeah. So I honestly, I probably didn't even care. I just needed to get out of there. All right. Now that we've gone down that rabbit hole and the <laughs> listeners have come with us, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the, the website portion of flavor balance. <laughs> hey, this loved is, it. Well, it's, all legitimate it's nice to have somebody I can nerd out with a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it is. I feel like I feel like you and Zach glaze over a little bit when I get into the CFRs. Oh, I love that so. stuff. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. I, 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 and it, and I get feedback from our customers. Love it too. So don't stop. I hope I don't well, ever make I, you I, stop. I remember. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that I pulled up the CFRs during the episode, and you guys just laughed and moved on. And I was like, No, I've spent all this time reading the CFRs while trying to pay attention. You guys should listen. But no, we've moved on. Okay, never mind. I, so I, I want to clarify. I remember that episode, and what I was thinking was that when you got all the information, you would chime in, and you did. Um, but so if I made you feel that way, that was not intended. I no, love it. it was, I really love it. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. It was honestly, funny. and I do, I do tend to just, I go, I, I go deep into nerding out whenever I have the yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Some I love it because those... you'll start, you'll, you're suddenly it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those parts of those episodes, even from an outsider, though, who isn't that's some of the most interesting parts to me because it's like I'm learning something new. Yeah. Uh, So it's it's more interesting than you think. (laughs) No, I mean, I love it. I can can keep doing (laughs) it. (laughs) But I think others, too, that that was um, almost, you know, one of the my hesitancies replacing Zach on this episode was that I was like, man, the last time you three were just together. I, I mean, I'm sh- I don't know how much you had to cut out of that episode, Spike, but you guys were – that was one of my favorite episodes because you guys were just – it just seemed like it was just three friends talking about their, their love of hot sauce <laughs> and, and CFRs. You know, <laughs> for, the, for the listener and, and viewer, um, a lot of times we stop and we'll do a, a meeting that ends up becoming – you know, should be another yeah. episode because we're just – but usually it's stuff we wouldn't tell you. <laughs> but, <laughs> You know, that guy's an yeah. asshole. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> oh, my God. That was a horrible episode. No, just kidding. Uh- <laughs> I'll be cutting that shit out. That's not staying in. <laughs> I don't I don't remember who it was recently um, who who said uh, when we said that we oh we, we always edit, we edit stuff out. And he was like, it doesn't sound like you edit much. <laughs> And he, of course, met swearing and things like that. And then we, on that episode, we, it was, yes, it was Derek. Derek, Yeah. And we went deep on, uh, we spent, God, a good, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes on something that all got cut that I will not say right now. It was 30 Um, minutes because I edited it all out. And the whole time he's sitting there like with his eyes wide. I'm trying to describe this. I've noticed that we, we forget to the, the listeners, which are most of our audience. So he's sitting there eyes wide like, like this. Yeah, he was like, he was like, what if, what is happening wow. here? <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, so you thought we didn't edit? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we are really three assholes. <laughs> His spike is a wizard with the editing; just makes us come off looking so nice. Talking about heat with heart, really, we're just talking shit. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 but we should wrap yeah. up. We should we should say good night. Um Spike, it was really great interviewing you today. It was great being interviewed. I like this. And uh, <laughs> I you know I I I I love you guys. You guys are like I see you every week. You're some of my best friends now. It's just I I feel so grateful for this podcast and for you guys. I I really, I really enjoy doing this. I really, I'm really glad that you guys asked me to do it. And um, Spike, I've said multiple times, you're one of the nicest human beings I know. Thank you very much. That means a lot. I will say too, as someone watching the podcast every week, the the same exact thing, I feel like you guys are my friends. And Spike, I even said that to you. I was like, 
on Thursday, I was not having the best of days. And I was just like, I love listening to your podcast just remotiv- re-motivates me every single week to just hear you guys talking about this stuff. So it's, I'm so happy that you guys are doing this. That message made my day. That absolutely made That's my great. day. Uh, and I wish I should have sent it to you, Claire, and to Zach. I, I think I was busy when it came through and I was just like, I was, you know, in business mode and suddenly I got this wonderful compliment about what we do making somebody's day better. And that, that really means a lot. Thank you. That is awesome. Well, thank you for doing That's it. Awesome. And thank you all for listening to us every week. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this has been a Spike Mind Media production.